I'm Julie Slater. We're at Woodstock 99, and I'm here with Our Lady Peace. How are you guys doing? Good. Uh, Rain Maida, vocalist, and also the drummer, uh, Jeremy Taggart. So there are about 300,000 people, maybe more than that, out there walking around Woodstock 99. Have you been able to check that out at all? It's pretty messy out there. <laughs> I saw a little bit of it last night with Metallica. Are you here for that? Yeah, we got here, I think, after Limp Bizkit went on, so we kind of saw the aftermath of that. Of all the uh, people yeah. trying to tear the whole place yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. So we saw a lot of things getting thrown around, an apocalyptic-like scene. <laughs> Were you worried at all? Of yes, people running for my for life. Their lives? <laughs> Jeremy was out in the crowd, so he was worried. How was the Metallica show? Did you like it? It was cool. I, I, I'm a big Rage fan. I thought that was awesome. But uh, I just wanted to see firsthand how crazy it was out for Metallica, and it was a little bit scary. So yeah. I ran back. <laughs> um. For Woodstock, like there's a lot of people out there who um, they're hot, tired, sweaty, wasted. How are you preparing yourself to perform for this crowd? It's good for us because we have a new record coming out, so we're going to play a lot of new material, so they're going to be really subdued and calm. So you don't think you'll get as many like cups thrown at you as I maybe the not. other bands? I hope not. I hope <laughs> not. I'm not good with that stuff. I throw back. I never quite understood the whole dodging things at the band. Like they are they doing that because they like you, they hate you. I don't know. They just I, like watching you flinch. I think so. I think it's just they got nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you've got two uh, really great albums. Uh, Thank you. Navid and Clumsy. You've got a new album now. Is that completely finished or? It's yeah. done. We just finished two weeks ago. So this is yeah. kind of our first, you know, real show with playing a lot of the new material. Wow. Yeah. So we're excited. It's to, to us this record is um, like the beginning. Although it sounds weird, not that we don't like our first two records, but it, we had some musicians playing this record that just kind of raised the level for us, and we tried to really distinguish what our sound is on this record, which is so hard to do these days. Right. So I, I think we got close. You had other musicians besides the band. Jeremy, yeah, yeah Jeremy a, made friends with Elvin Jones, who's a played with know, John Coltrane for years, and uh -huh. probably yeah, one of the best jazz. About seventy-three ever. years old, and he's just a, a god to me, and. Uh, he, it, it was such an awesome experience. I've you know become friends with him, and, and I've got to to know him. And uh, it's just one of those things that once in a lifetime that happens to you. And uh, we had another friend from Boston, Jamie Edwards, who played with Blue Man Group uh -huh. in Boston. Uh, he he's just a all around great musician. And we had him come up and play some keyboards and guitar on the record. And now he's kind of like become a, a fifth member now for live and whatever <laughs> so do you think they'll be playing at all with you ever uh, stopping by any of your shows Elvin any uh, <laughs> people know. you've collaborated with yeah I don't know Elvin Elvin played on the song that he played on on a record he said he's gonna take out on the road with, with his and band and play with the jazz <laughs> machine so that'll be kinda which cool which is yeah I have to go see that yeah. if he does that right and what about the uh, first single uh, is it gonna be One Man Army One Man Army yeah and uh, what about that song um I don't know it's a ump tempo little ditty yeah you know <laughs> It's it's just a song that kind of it's about individuality, you know. It's about finding a place for yourself um, amongst all the crap that you're told and all the jobs that people find themselves into. You know, it's kind of just living by your own rules, really. It's probably a good place here at Woodstock to play yeah, that song. Yeah. I think everybody's living by their own rules. Definitely. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen anyone walking around completely naked? There's a lot of that out there. Yeah, what's up that. with that? Yeah. I don't know what the deal is with that. One. There was oh, a painted. Right, no, but just completely painted. Yeah. Well, uh, no guys saw, painted, you though. You saw a big, big obese man. I saw man. a bunch of people naked, holding hands in some sort of circle last night. That they wouldn't Do you let think me they're into, completely so. sober? It's uh, <laughs> looking a little way going. Sober here. <laughs> um, you guys play huge arenas in Canada, and uh, you have very successful touring, and you're doing really well in the U.S., but I'm just wondering, I was actually talking to Tragically Hip the other day, trying to figure out, like, how you have such huge success in Canada and how, like, what's the difference between your Canadian audiences and the U.S. to try and pull them into that? It's, uh, For us, uh, it's the same. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's no different. It's just a little smaller in the States right now. And hopefully yeah. this record will change that. But it's kind of, um, the way we judge everything with our music is when people come to a show, if they're kind of sitting around waiting for the songs I hear on the radio, like in the States, like Clumsy or Superman's Dead, it's disappointing for us because, you know, it's, there's, they're not getting the record. But yeah, we, made, we make records, not singles. So, I mean, if, if you get a lot of fans that are just into hearing that, then we're not interested in that kind yeah, of Yeah, it feels disposable that yeah. way when you're on stage. But all the touring we did in the States last time, 
you know, there was the crowds were singing songs that, you know, like the seventh and eighth tracks on the record. So that that right. just means that I think we're building like this solid fan base that, you know, kind of the way like REM did and and those bands back then were they last, you know, and you can build a career. But that's hard to do these days. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Yeah, we'll see. Do you think that the Canadian fans are more accepting? Do you think the U.S. is more geared think, on wanting well, to hear we, the hits? We, we toured like five times on the first record in a van across Canada, so we really spent a lot of time. Uh, and our first record came out in, in the States about on, a, a, on, a, on a small, on a, on like an independent label called Relativity mm -hmm. uh, for Naveed. So it was kind of, you know, they were great to us, but they just, you know, it wasn't like Sony in Canada and like Columbia now. So, right. you know, with having Columbia behind us now, it feels, it feels just like it did in Canada. And, you know, hopefully that'll, that'll open a lot more doors for us. And didn't Naveed, didn't that come out and then wasn't a song on it on a soundtrack for a movie? Starcy was on Armageddon, yeah, for that, some weird reason. That kind reason. of seemed to uh, bring it out did more okay, interest back into the album. <laughs> yeah, you know? I know. I thought that was a pretty cool thing for you because then all yeah. of a sudden in radio, they started playing the songs again. And yeah. It yeah, definitely we were just seemed to help you. upset it didn't make the movie. Supposedly it was like it's on the, the editing room floor of the movie. It's really weird with soundtracks nowadays. It's weird a lot being of time they're not at all not in the movie. In the yeah. movie. But yet they Whatever. sell the CD. I don't know what you're going to do. Um, I think you have a really unique singing voice. Um, I think it's pretty awesome. Do you, oh, thank you look up to anybody in particular as far as when you were growing up for singers? Um, I listen to a lot of R.E.M., a lot of U2, but I listen to a lot of female singers too. Um, Sinead O'Connor was a huge influence. Um, and I've always liked people like Bjork, where there's just a lot of acrobatics in her voice. And right. that's, that's something that's always interested me. So I... I kind of it's and females tend to do that more, so I kind of went that female direction. power. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll find us on Lilith Fair next summer. And what about um, you put together your own festival in Canada? Was Summer it called Somersault? Yeah. And who was involved in that? And uh, why did you guys do it? Uh, I don't know because we could basically. Yeah. You know, I mean, we really did. Yeah. We met a lot of different bands over the world in the last five years, and we yeah, had we the chance to, to put some of them together on yeah, one show. Like, for us to have like the Crystal Method and. Garbage. Have them close in Canada was yeah. amazing, you know, because it wasn't an ego thing that we had to be the last band because it's our festival. They finished the shows, and garbage, and just a whole bunch of different bands. It was, it was, yeah, it was just kind of at the end of touring clumsy so heavily in the states and around the world. It felt like um, a good way to finish that whole record, you know, with yeah. something that we wanted to do that was just fun, and we just kind of sat back after it was all organized and watched all the bands every day and played as well. But it, we felt a big part of it. Even though, you know, it was ours, it just, we didn't feel like the creators of it. It just felt like a lot of music. Like, you know, kind of like a small Woodstock, really. And do you feel like you were able to really get to know all the bands? Did you get to select the bands that were on that yeah. show? Well, yeah, all the bands were either bands that we'd met before or bands that we know really well. I mean, we met Garbage in Paris in a hotel and, you know, thought they were really nice people. And eventually invited them to do it. And the Crystal Method we were just fans of. Yeah, I think we played with them in Phoenix once together, but we just yeah. thought they were a cool band. So. Yeah. And the name of the new album? It's long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's... I don't know. It, it's People either hate it or at least remember it. Happiness is not a fish that you can catch. And do you feel that? Like, what's that? Is it a big statement to everybody? No, it's like a fortune cookie statement, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, not, we're not trying I mean, to write... You guys write. have to be pretty happy right now. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. But I mean, it's it's that. There's two sides to that coin. So, and we once if you live with the record, and that title kind of relates to all the songs, and there's you know different dimensions of meaning into it. Some are really superficial, and some are heavy if you want to. But there's no rules. You can do whatever you want with it. It can well, be a fortune cookie. Well, have a great time here at Woodstock. Thank uh, you. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, thanks. Have a great show. We'll all be watching. All right. um, Julie Slater. We're at Woodstock '99.